The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day from TFNN. Welcome to the February 20th. That's right, the February 20th, wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Traders Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always, I mean always, be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? You know the easiest way to do that? It's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. Truly grateful. But more importantly... I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. You can't dial in. We understand. But let those fingers do the walking. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, be good enough to put radio show question. Of course, in the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show, basically a flat market out here ahead of the Fed Minutes release. Uh, you got the Dow up four. The S&P is totally flat. NASDAQ 100 off 18. Russell's up three. Semis are up 12. Trainees are up 10. Composite, NASDAQ, that is, down 14. Um, Wilshire's off uh, 12. New York Stock Exchange, interesting, up 34 points. So we've got a uh, a buy few crazy nice, a split, a split decision out here with regard to the uh, market. Leading the charge, the upside, it is Garmin. Garmin up 16%, nearly 12 bucks. Magellan. So it's a couple of guys at their uh, gals at uh, know how to uh, figure out where we're at. So you got Garmin, you got Magellan, Magellan Health, that is, up nearly 11.5% or 7 bucks. Um, I'd like to pronounce the next one, but that would be uh, pretty much impossible. LMAT is the uh, ticker symbol out there. That's up 28%. Uh, I'm not going to touch the name because it totally would mess that up. And I was going to say something else, but I would do that. Belden Inc., BDC is a ticker symbol. That's up 12% or $6. And to the downside, it is Intercept Pharmaceuticals, off 14.5%, 17 bucks. Wix.com down nearly 17 bucks or 13%. The Trade Desk trading to the downside, down nearly 9.5% or 15 buckaroonies. There's certainly things to take a look at, but I want to take a look at what you want to take a look at. And at this stage here, I don't know what you want to take a look at. I've got nothing on deck. It is clear. The tab, the slate is clear out here. So let's just tool around the S&P 500. I did the one o'clock update. Decided, why don't we do something different? Well, not that I do that update that often, but by doing something different, why don't we go look underneath the covers of the sectors inside the S&P 500 and see what they tell us. Interestingly enough, I did not know this. I didn't know this till we did that. You think everything happens for us or to us? I'm going with for us. So this is kind of interesting. I think it's kind of interesting. If we go back and we take a look at the high that formed inside the XLK, number one sector inside the S&P 500, I don't know the exact weighting, 20%, somewhere in that range out here. But if you take a look at the high that formed on October 4th, you would start doing your wave counts. You would do that on the trading day of June 29th. I just coincidentally. Incidentally, you had that power of nine candle session on June 28th. Oftentimes on counts eight, nine, or ten, you see a change in trend. Well, clearly we had that. And then what does price do? Price goes ahead and makes its all-time high, does that singing in Stevie Wonder's key of G, wave number seven out there. Now, that identified a top. 
You go from there down to the low on December 24th out here, and you start counting those waves to the downside, and guess what you get? You know what you get. You get singing in the key of G. A little bit lower note out there, that's for sure. But still, seventh wave move to the downside. So now we take a look at the XLK today. Hmm, something to think about. Apparently yesterday, I'm going to go with yesterday or the day before, or yeah. So we have we have been in wave number seven for the last several days out here. So is, is all that you and I have to do is watch the XLK? Could it really be that easy? Easy peasy? I don't know. But we're certainly going to find out. So it's very, very interesting. And that's what Artie Johnson would say. But we're going to go see what Victor has to say about ticker symbol BHC. BHC is uh, Bausch Health Companies out here. Victor, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Yeah, How are you? Real, real quick, um, the earnings came out. The guy that runs the company used to run Demigreon. I don't know if you run them, DNDN. They went bankrupt. We you okay. this company? Where it's going? Okay. Where's the yeah. next touchdown point? So, what, was the, what was the question? I didn't hear you. I apologize. Where do you think it's headed? Where's it headed? Well, if you take a look at today, uh, so I'll give you the first place it's headed to is 21.23. So between 21.23 and 18.26 would be um, the price target. And what's the reason that you're, so here's a guy that took a company, BK, before. I don't know what they reported today. What is it that has you so interested in uh, Bausch Health Companies? Is there some inside info, or what, what do you have that's got you interested oh, in this no, equity? No, no, the, 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 Somebody I know like really likes the company, but I don't have a lot of debt, and I don't know. Something about this company, yeah. So I don't know, uh, Victor. So take a look at this with regard to whether you've got friends that like it. Let's take, it. Let's take a look at who likes it. Let's take a look at who likes it and who doesn't like it. Because because yeah. that is a really important point that you made out here. And what, what you and I do from a technical analysis yeah. standpoint is understand, do shareholders like it, love it, hate it? In this case here, they absolutely hate this. This equity in August of 2015, not really that long ago, was up at 260. Right. 381. It's yeah. at 22 bucks right. right now. There are very few shareholders here that are loving this stock. You know what I mean? Right, right. I, I would rather see you uh, investing your money in something where where it's moving higher and all the traders love it. That's not to say that this couldn't have found a bottom out here. But when we just take what a look that? at what's really gone on historically, um, you know, I, it just doesn't look like it's a real winner. Um, just right, yet. Right. What about AKAM? AKAM. So Akamai. Um, so if we yeah. take a look at Akamai uh, and we look at its monthly time frame chart, what you're going to see is this is basically near its all time highs. So here's the exact opposite of this. Well, whew, geez, Louise. It's not, it's not near its all time high at all. No, I know. I just pulled it back a little further. This thing was barely trained at 344. Oh, my goodness. Goodness gracious. Hey, yeah, uh, uh, give me a top dweller. Give me something in the penthouse, would you? None of these bottom dweller things. What about VUO? VUO. Hey, Victor, we've got to go to a breakout here, but you're welcome to stay on, and we'll take a look at. Uh, uh, give that symbol to the guys in the uh, control. Oh, what was the symbol? I can type it in. VUO. VUO. All right, we come back from this break here. I'm not pulling anything up. That's why V is in Victor. U is in. United? No, Z, zebra. Zebra. Okay. Zebra. okay. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. On our screen right now, ticker symbol Z is in zebra, UO, Zuora, Inc. I'm going to guess the name. And, Victor, what I like about this uh, is it looks like this is headed higher. And as far as a price projection, this took out a swing point um, the day before, a couple days ago. The swing point that I'm referring to is January 31st. And that gives us our, our progressive price tool out here to project price and so the first stop to the upside should be about 2669 2856 is not out of the question and the 3094 level and all that makes sense because this had a nice big move to the downside on august 31st and that was at about the 2920 level many of those shareholders may be just looking to get their money back and so I would say that uh, where ZUO is headed to is somewhere in the 2758, 2920 area out here. So are you in it? Are you looking to get in it? Well, maybe we have lost Victor. Here's what I would have said, Victor. The ideal, the more ideal spot for you to have gotten into ZUO would just simply have been by using your TAS market profiles out here. And that says that the day of Fe February 7th was an option, uh, February 11th, February 13th, but price had come back and test the level of support. So ZUO looks like it is headed higher. Thanks for calling, and uh, best of luck. Uh, question from uh, Nick A. Nick A says, uh, can you tell me where you see, what you are seeing in the Dow on the daily, the 60-minute, and the five-minute time frame? Nicholas, Nicholas, Nicholas. The five-minute time frame? Really? Really? Um, well, you know if we're going to look at the five-minute time frame, we're not going to really look at the Dow, are we? Well, I mean, we could, but I, I can't because if I'm going to try to give you some information on the Dow, what I'm going to have to do is really take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract. That's what I've got to do. It's the only thing that I can do out here. And, if we're, and the reason is, is because, you know, Victor and I, we were just talking about those TAS market profiles. So I'm going to have to put those on. I'm just decorating the chart here, trying to get it uh, decorated to give us an idea of where support or resistance is out here and we're just taking a look at the uh, five minute time frame and on the five minute time frame uh, it looks to me like where this would the upside potential on a five minute basis is going to be i'll give you two price points 25 9 12 
remember, we're looking at the Dow Equity Futures contract versus the actual cash indice out here to 25,925. 25,925 is where all of the sellers are lined up. But there's also sellers and buyers lined up at 25,912. From a support standpoint, you're looking at 25,880. That's what we see when we take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract on a five-minute basis. You asked about the 60-minute time frame. Now, in the 60-minute time frame, we'll just switch over to Stevie's other charts out here uh, because we do take a look at the – I do follow what's going on on an hourly basis out here. And we're going to see that this has really just been trading sideways for several days. So it's just been sideways bound. And it would say that here, let's do it like this. Let's come off of the white chart and let's go on to the black chart. Let's just change the time frame. It's just going to be easier for me to draw the consolidation. Now, here you can see there's a brand new hourly profile that formed with support, which it tested and it held, was 25,848, resistance 25,934. Now, I'm going to turn that off. And why am I going to turn that off? Just it's just easier for me, I think, to uh, to draw a rectangular box, you know. And you're going to say, really, <laughs> really, you're you at this age, you struggle with rectangular boxes. Well, you uh, look. The reality is, the answer to that question, in all honesty, is yes. I am. I believe, and I'm not saying because I'm proud of this, but I can put this in perspective. I believe I am the only individual that was kicked out of kindergarten uh, or psychoanalyzed because of the stick figures that I used to draw. And I am not kidding you with regard to that. My mom, bless her, may she rest in peace, had to go in and talk to the kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Springer, of all people, about the... Um, uh, apparently some issues in my stick figures, believe it or not. But hey, here's the cool thing about rectangle. See, it was just preparing. Everything we do in life, we're just preparing for something else. And clearly, I was preparing for, you know, using these stick figures here, which we can call candlesticks or other kinds of sticks to help us analyze where something is going. So if the uh, news is wonderful, what I mean by that is just simply buyers really buy into whatever it is that they want to hear from the Fed meeting, then where the Dow futures should head up to is the top of the consolidation breakout, which would be around 26,109. Likewise, if they don't like what they hear out here, what we can say, Nick, is that you've got a consolidation. Remember, this is a measured move, and the measured moves are equal to or greater than. But the downside target here, when this consolidation breaks, would be 25,646 out there. So just trading in a consolidation, if we put the daily time frame chart out, here you asked for it that means you're going to get it what do we know we don't know a whole lot we see small bodied candles i suppose that tells us a lot what does that tell us that tells us hey uh, the market is really indecisive here now is it indecisive because they're just waiting for the fed minutes out here it could be i don't know it doesn't tell us why it's indecisive it just tells us that it is does that mean the kibosh is coming it doesn't no, it, uh, it, it really doesn't mean anything other than it's tired. Hey, you know, sometimes you wake up and you're tired. Guess what? The Dow Equity Futures contract has been waking up for the last three mornings saying it is tired, and it still is tired. Support here on a daily time frame, 25,649. Now, 25,649, that would be a move. Um, that would be a pretty good move, wouldn't it? That'd be a 300-point move, give her a little less than 300 points, and you'd think the world uh, was coming to an end, uh, or the Dow's world was coming to an end. The reality is all that would happen in the Dow was just a test of support. So, Nick, I hope that helps you out on what's going on inside the five-minute time frame, the 60-minute time frame. Remember, stick figures. Uh, I wish my mom had saved those stick figures just so you and I could go analyze it ourselves to figure out what, what was Stevie drawing? with those stick figures out there. Uh, okay, so that's all we've got. Hey, we, oh, we've got another question out here. This may require stick figure drawing also. This one coming, Alex, sending from a uh, cell phone or something. I could hardly read. What What the heck? Hi, Steve. XLKAO, this is information. XLK is 18% Microsoft, 17% Apple. QQQ is 9.4. Uh, are these stocks having trouble going higher and holding next okay and QQQ from going uh, higher? Yeah, I, Alex, but but does that mean anything? I see. I I take the op. The, the, I think the beauty of uh, dyslexic people is the fact that you can see things differently.
Now, I don't have dyslexia, but I do like to uh, must be a neighbor of it because I see things differently than the way others do. I've heard others talk about how, hey, Apple can't get going and a few others can't get going to the upside. And that just means it's over. I disagree. I wholeheartedly disagree with that conclusion out there. It's not that it might not be over, but I disagree with drawing that same conclusion. Why? Well, usually it's because of the work that I do. If you take a look at this chart as an example, Alex, if we take a look at the QQEW out here, this is the equal weighted version of the Qs. It really tells us a really important picture about what's going on out there. And I'm going to leave it like that as we go into a break. Nah, I'm just kidding. I got about 10 seconds. See how the Qs were moving lower between the time frame. On a closing basis, from January 22nd, they made a lower low on the 29th. And what happened in the equal weight? A higher low. It's the equal weighted ETF that tells you just how strong. And they don't really give a hoot about what Apple and Microsoft are doing. Not the equal weighted, guys. We'll be right back. We both know you've got what it takes to crush your goals with the will to make it happen. So why haven't you accomplished it yet? For most, the answer is fear. Fear is that limiting factor that stops us from getting what we truly want, but it doesn't have to. That's why on Wednesday, February 27th from 5 to 6 p.m., I'll be hosting my one-hour workshop, Overcoming Fear in Five Easy Steps. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, the 2018 Market Timer of the Year, author of Mastering Probability, and an expert in human emotion. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain free access to this extraordinary workshop where I'll coach you how to bust through your barriers of fear. How you respond to fear is what sets you apart from the rest of the crowd. Look, this could be the most valuable hour we ever spend together. So come to the homepage of TFNN.com and begin your 30-day risk-free trial of Mastering Probability and take the next step towards the life you deserve. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go back to Alex's uh, kind of 
question and just information that he was posing. And it's great because it just really um, actually leads into something that, that's really important for us. Well, important for us here at the show because what uh, you're tuning in, you are a pattern recognition uh, expert at, at, at some level. You're just, we're always trying to improve our game. I try to improve my game every day. You try to improve your game every day out here. And for us, it's just really all about the patterns. And, and Alex and, and everybody else that is listening out there, if we just take a chart and we compare what's going on inside the equal weighted version of the Qs and the weighted version of the Qs, QQQ out here, what you're going to identify, and you can't really use this as a timing tool necessarily. It's a confirmation tool of maybe some other factor, some other pattern that you see inside of the indice or the, the futures contract. or but, but take a look at the different red lines that are on this chart out here. For those of you listening, and as an example, if we go back to the January 2018 time frame, January 26. And because we're looking at line charts, these are closing prices. You'll see that the equal weighted ETF was basically making a double top on March 12, 2018. It was doing that while what we saw in the queues, they were moving to higher ground. They made a higher high. Which one, like in the game of Liars Poker, was really telling you the message? It was the equal weight. Now, we know that because, hey, we get to go study the left-hand side of the chart. Uh, we can look like just experts by looking at the left-hand side of the but Let's just not focus there. Let's take a look at what the equal weighted ETF was doing between August 29th and really through uh, when the final top, in essence, came in October 3rd. What was the equal weighted QQQ series ETF doing? It was making lower highs. What was the Qs doing on a closing basis? Again, basically making a double top out there. When the first really significant counter trend rally formed, if you take a look at the equal weighted ETF between October 23rd and you had a retest of that on October 29th, we clearly had lower lows on a closing basis inside of the QQQ series ETF. Which one was telling you the picture? Again, the equal weight. We talked about, or if we didn't talk about, we'll just re-talk about it. Uh, we didn't talk about November 20th. November 20th is when the equal weighted Qs made their bottom. You had a double bottom test because there was a much higher low in the equal weight back around November the 23rd out here. Which one was telling us the true direction? Again, it was the equal weight. You kind of get the picture. So you're looking for these divergent patterns out here. They're not always present. But when they are, you pay attention to them. Again, the one just before we went in the break was dealing with the time period of around January 22nd to uh, January 29th, where the queues were making a lower low. If you had bought into the theory that it was the weighted version of the stocks that was telling you the picture, you would have gotten just simply tanked. Right, because those folks that say, well, the Qs aren't moving high, or the, the QQQ isn't moving higher because of Apple and Microsoft and whoever else it is that those that group wants to blame. I hear this on television all the time, and I just I just want to knock my head up against the the the, the wall because it, it that's not the fact. That is so opposite of what the facts are out here. So, yes, you want to pay attention. Sure, you want to pay attention to, to those individual equities, but more so from trading those individual equities. When, you're, when you find divergent patterns between the QQEW and the Qs, this is all about patterns out here, stock patterns, you're going to find out that it's the equal weight that tells you the real story out there. So I hope that helps. Thanks for writing in. There was another question that came in. Well, I see Jay was asking about the TAS market profile levels. Jay, no changes yet. I can share with you that, the, um, that they want to form new profiles. I'm referring to the TAS market profiles. And here are the daily and the weekly that are still active out here. And just no changes. Now, I got a message earlier this morning, very early this morning, that they wanted to try to form new profiles. But as of 1.34 in the afternoon, they just simply have not taken effect. Maybe it'll be different at the end of the day. Maybe it'll be different tomorrow. But as we speak right now at 1.35, we don't have any market profiles to for us to use to be able to identify uh, well where price is headed to as an example um but we, what we can say unequivocally is that there's no resistance 
so price can continue to move higher. So we have to look at those seventh waves, those power of nine, those rose momentum indicator uh, signals, uh, various different tools like that to try to identify, you know, tops or bottoms out there. So no new information for uh, for the equity futures contracts, that is. So pay, Sylvia writes in, Sylvia writes in and says, uh, I am getting my vitamin D. I, get my, I, I take that, uh, how many milligrams of vitamin D do I take every day? Um, Plenty. Uh, could you revisit NVTA? Um, let's go take a look at it. Let's go revisit NVTA. I don't know what that is, but uh, sounds like new vitamins to me. NVT, no, that's me, new NVTI. New Vit uh, NVTA. Let's go take a look at it. Yeah, let's look at it. Oh, boy. Yeah, in, yeah, that's right. I don't know how to pronounce this one either. NVTA. Let me put it on my other stocks out here. How do we pronounce this? In Vici? Is that? Oh, oh, you put it in here. Oh, to make it easier. It, so here, this is perfect. So we've got uh, uh, um, Sylvia puts it in here phonetically for me to be able to tell you the name of this company. In Vici. Did I get it right? Okay. So the question is um, by calls or options. Well, you know what you've got going on today is you've got a breakout. Let's go see what's it doing on the left-hand side of the chart out here. So this is testing a swing point. Let's go see what kind of volume. Looks like pretty decent volume so far, but is it enough? And by is it enough, we're referring to the high of 1838. It's traded 1858, by the way. The volume there on that swing point was 3.3 million shares. You are at 4 million shares today. In Vice, looks like this thing has just confirmed a giganto. A to B equals C to the upside. Really? Uh, you want to know what that is, Sylvia? On the daily time frame, if this comes to fruition, uh, well, now, it, the fruition piece is it needs to close above 1838, stay above 1838, and then it gives you the one-to-one -one A to B equals C D price projection of uh, 2306. Yeah, I guess that's not too bad. It's trading at 1857. I would say more likely the 1 to 1.272 would be the target at 2688 out there. So that's what the daily time frame chart is saying to us. The monthly time frame chart says, hey, the swing time, the, the all-time high is 2181. So that has to be a potential level of resistance. So we're going to go with 2181 to the uh, price level of um, 23 to 27 in A to B equals C, D world out there. Sylvia, thanks so much for phonetically going ahead and writing in how I should pronounce I-N, not I-N, N-V-T-A. And that's in Vici. I would never have gotten that. Right now, we got the Dow up uh, 33 points. S&P is up three and a half. NASDAQ wonder down seven points. We'll go take a look at uh, silver for Z inside the tiger's den when we get back from this break. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive, Instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. We got a request to take a look at the uh, silver contract, the March silver contract, uh, right now. And if we look at the uh, the four different time frames on my screen, the hourly. That's one on the left-hand panel, and you got the two-hour, then you have the five-hour, and then you've got the daily. You'll see that all of the bars are green, so it's telling us that uh, price is up above resistance, the profiles. On a daily basis, that resistance level will be 1582. Of course, when we look at the daily time frame chart, one of the things that we're going to see is prices back to a swing point. The swing point is where, at least previously, there was a change in trend. That exact price is 1620. The exact high so far today was 16.195. I'd say that's pretty close. Now, the question is, is it going to go ahead and take that level out and then go ahead and give you another A to B equals CD to the upside? Is it going to pull back? Um, so these charts here, these time frames really aren't generating that signal for us. However... We're going to just dip into Stevie's bag out here. You never know what's going to jump out of Stevie's bag. But if we do take a look at the 30-minute time frame, well, what we can see, well, that's the daily time frame. So that's why you never know what's going to jump out of Stevie's bag, because you can easily say one thing and then grab the wrong thing out here. All right, so let's go take a look at the 30-minute uh, time frame chart. Here we go. So was it a smart move, uh, uh, Mr. Z, to exit that long trade out here? And this is the 30-minute time frame chart for silver. And all that this has printed on it are those power of nine counts out there. Nine consecutive closes where the close was either equal to or greater than the close four bars earlier. Now, when I say equal, I mean equal to, either greater than or depending on the count moving to the upside, right? Either nine consecutive higher closes or nine consecutive lower closes, depending on how you're counting. Well, right now we're dealing with the nine consecutive closes higher on a 30-minute basis. And that ninth bar finished at 130. It's now 144. Now, what we know about this is when this tool works, and when I say works, in identifying a change in trend, a change in trend can take place in bar number 8, 9, or 10. Now, I don't have bars number 10 out here, so you just have to look to the bar after 9. And it works on silver on a 30-minute basis more than it doesn't. So the cool thing is, let's say that during the next half hour, coming into 2 o'clock, we don't have a higher high. 
then what Mr. Z in the den has is a reference point on the short-term chart. And if that high gets taken out, the high of bar number nine, the resistance of that swing point out there, it might say, hey, I just had to pay just a little bit of uh, money for a lot of bit of information out there. Likewise, if you're going to buy a pullback, the question is, where could this pull back to? Well, it could really pull back all the way to the low of 930 this morning. That would be the ultimate uh, test of support on a one-hour time frame chart, out, uh, sorry, 30-minute time frame chart for me. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, silver. I did originally pull over the daily time frame chart, so we should look at it as well. Um, what is this uh, telling you and I? Uh, nothing more than what we already looked at uh, earlier. So it's really right up against resistance. I get the move. I especially get it where we see that power of nine count on a 30-minute uh, chart out there. And right now what you're doing is just uh, looking uh, for, uh, for information. On a weekly basis, if we put this on a weekly basis, well, let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, Mr. Z, let's take a look at this chart here. This is the weekly chart. All right, so here's the weekly time frame chart with weekly and monthly horizontal trading range boundary lines. So on a, uh, and monthly are the red ones and the green ones are weekly. Now it's $16.17 on a monthly basis. Um, it, going back as far as I've got data in this chart here, we've seen 14 either opens or closes at that level. So what you also know is you're up at a significant resistance level. And if price can clear that, then the next hurdle or the next price level for silver to head to is 1644. 55 opens and closes at about that level on a weekly basis. It is the single largest congestion area for silver. So that's what we see when we take a look at the daily and the weekly. Let's go out to Massachusetts and speak with Tony. Tony, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hi, Steve. Let me first congratulate you on your award. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking at you, Uncle George, Alice, Zebra, you guys. It's okay. three times natural gas. What do you think that can go up, if any? Well, to answer the question, we really have to take a look at uh, the uh, natural gas futures contract out here. And right now, uh, natural gas futures could or should trade up to $2.77. And that is as okay. long as price does not close below $2.62. Now, I know that's not what you asked because you were looking at the ETF out there. But in looking at the ETF, I want you, if you're trading this, I want you to be able to pay attention to the natural gas futures contracts, UGAC. And I don't know what's inside this, Tony. Is it... Is it more than one futures contract? Do you know by any chance you might not I don't, know off the top? I don't. I was looking for maybe 33. Yeah. Well, 3305, I would say, so you're looking for 33. We're going to give you 33, not just because you asked for it. We'd like to give it to you just because you asked for it. But 3305 happens to be the top of its daily profile out here. So if natural gas... If, uh, if the contract can get legs out here, um, then, yeah, 33 is in the cards. Watch the price point of $2.62. You just don't want to see it close below that uh, because if you do, chances are you're on the wrong side of that trade. All right, my friend? Okay. Can I ask you one other question on the VIX? You see a part of me? Another question. Go ahead. TVIX, Thomas Victor Indian X-ray. TV. Uh, do, you are, are, do you work with Dynamite? Is that what you, is that yeah, what you I previously... Just, I play small amounts. I play small amounts. Just TVIX. TVIX. It is a, do, you, how, do you trade that for more than a day? I hope not. No, no, no. Yeah. I, you know, at this stage here, I think, uh, Tony, what, what you've got to do and what I've got to do right now is wait to see how the market responds for the first couple of hours, if it does at all, after the release of the uh, Fed minutes. Uh, if you were going to okay. be trying to take a long position in TVIX, you're looking for some type of signal that the S&P 500 has topped. And as we speak right now, that signal is just not present. So I'd say it's too early to go into TVIX. If the S&P futures contract closed below 2760, then you'd really have something. But at this stage here, 
I don't have the signal that the ES Mini is top, then I'm going to say that you need to stay away from TVIX, okay? Thank you very much, Steve. You bet. Thanks for calling. And that was Tony in uh, Massachusetts out there. So we're about to head to break. I know there's a couple of questions that have come in. Somebody in the den. No, I think somebody was looking for copper out here. Um, so during the break, uh, I'll go ahead and pull up the uh, copper contract. That looks like that's trading. Uh, I don't know if I've got the current copper contract out here. Do I? 220, right around 292. So we'll take a look at that. We get back from the break and uh, wrap things up. Prepare things for uh, David White. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark have launched a special for a limited time only. Save 25% off Primal Edge and Health Signals. Just use promo code HEALTH for Health Signals or use promo code PRIMAL for Primal Edge and save 25% off instantly when you sign up. All the details are available on each order page at TFNN. Certified personal trainer Nico DeHaan's newsletter Health Signals comes out twice a month and is packed with great information on health, fitness, and diet. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox, and contains a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. This sale won't last long. Sign up now using promo code HEALTH for Health Signals or PRIMAL for Primal Edge and save 25%. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com right now. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back. So Craig wanted to take a look at the copper. And uh, Craig says, it seems like it uh, broke out of uh, its lower range, my thoughts out here. And you're absolutely right. Uh, it did break out yesterday and today. Um, and where it broke out of was above resistance of its task market profile on a daily basis. And that was at 285. And so that's a beautiful thing. Here's what it's trading into. So there is there's one other area that copper needs to clear before it can run up into this 337 level. And that's where this had a gap to the downside 
downside on the trading day of July the 5th. So obviously we have a holiday out there. July 3rd, that low is 2.954. That's going to be a level that you're going to want to be watching, Craig. Uh, the top of that gap is 2.921. That's what you're trading into right now. I would say getting above that, closing above that. Then that says, okay, you've broken out of this so-called lower range, and you're likely to head up towards that swing point from the trading session of June the 7th. So good eyes out there. Uh, we just took it back a tad further to the left to give you one other level of resistance. Uh, we've got a uh, listener, John Z. He is uh, different from John Z in the Tiger's Den. Uh, I am long WPC, that is WP carry uh, for your retirement account. You rely upon dividends. You've got the long-term view. What price should I sell and what price should I buy? And that's uh, John in Milwaukee. I love Milwaukee. Well, this is just trading into consolidation. And so um, this is a long-term hold. Your consolidation is down as low as 52 bucks. And the top of the consolidation, you're basically in that range right now. Uh, this can certainly head higher. And this is a monthly chart that we've got out here. Last time that price was up in this range, uh, this was on the trading session of January, or the month of January 2015, 7 million shares. You're at 11 million shares already. That looks pretty good. Um, so that was 7 million, then, the, then about another 8 million back here on July the uh, 10th. Um, I don't see any reason for you to uh, bow out of this. It looks to me, if you're wondering where the upper side of this is, it's at 79.34. And maybe price takes that out as well. Folks. Thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, the entire world's favorite polar bear, it's David White. It's as simple as that. So stay tuned. Listen to him. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. I'll be back with you on Terrific Thursday. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.